Hello, garden people, people interested in gardening. It's Meredith from Backyard Caring. Well, that's too much sun. Um, it's really beautiful out, so I'm not gonna make this super long, but I am gonna make it informative. Um, got a couple things I wanna get done on the live stream. Um, so, we're doing tomatoes today, which is awesome. There's about a window starting a couple weeks ago, all the way up into May when you can start tomatoes. Um, they're pretty versatile. Things like cherry tomatoes especially, you can start those all the way up into mid-May if you wanted to, or even June. Um, I've had like little tiny current tomatoes um, get started, I'd say naturally on their own in mid-June, mid and they produce a ton of fruit. So just depends, but if you have a need or want for some really big, juicy tomatoes, we want to give them as much time as possible. Also, tomatoes, most of them are um, indeterminate, which means that they will keep growing all the way through the summer until frost hits them really or until it gets really cold so the longer our season the more tomatoes i'm going to turn the camera around and show you guys some stuff that i've got going under lights this lettuce is looking crazy good um, i started it on the live stream a couple of weeks ago in one pot and then i split up all the little baby lettuce into their own little containers and to be honest a lot of them did not look red or nearly this speckled. So I'm really happy with this seed mix. And so that's some of the stuff I have going. There's some peppers, some really old, ooh, there goes my tripod. Some really old um, jalapeno pepper seed. And it is going pretty well. I don't know why the first leaves got a little crispy, but they're coming along. And then I've got a kind of a nursery of some houseplant type stuff. And then I've got some tomatoes already started. Um, they are sealed up because these don't totally seal down, so I decided to just put a little bit of duct tape there. However, I am on this live stream going to start some uh, tomato seeds and show you some tricks for that. I also have these windowsill little guys, which are full of some little tomatoes starting up here. And in terms of, as far as windows go, this is south facing, um, and it's really warm up there, so it do does well, but... Not everyone's window is going to be suitable for this kind of thing. So I forget which kinds we started in here, but I've got it somewhere. Today I'm going to be starting some specialty varieties that I have, um, but they look the same as everything else. So that's what we're going to do. Um, hot peppers on their way. They could be a little bigger, but they'll jump in this next month or so. Yeah, so let's get started on some tomato seed stuff. I've got a couple things here on the table, um, different methods and things like that. Where did I put my drill? There it is. We're going to need that for today. Um, I'm going to show you some of the ways that I start them. Um, here's some fresh seed that I did on my own, and I've got so, so much. <laughs> this is more than enough, and if I'm storing them properly, this should last a really long time. Um, one of the biggest questions I get with tomato um, seeds in the first place is, um, can you use old seed? How long does the seed last? Tomato seed is pretty incredible. And if it's um, processed properly, and you can kind of see here that the tomatoes have like a fuzzy outer coating. They're all clean. There's no um, flesh from the tomato or even skin left over in here. And it's completely dry in a bag. And then that is stored in a cool, dry place until the next year I want to use them. Um, so you can definitely start your own seeds this way. What I do, and I was thinking about doing this on the live stream, um, I've got an old tomato here that unfortunately fell a couple times, so it's kind of doomed, but nothing goes bad at my house because the chickens can eat it. Um, but you just take a fresh tomato and you're gonna squeeze out that jelly with the seeds into a little jar. I'm not actually gonna do that because whenever I do messy things on the stream, I just have the dirty hands for the whole time. So I'm not going to do that, but after, let's imagine I had the jelly in here. I'm going to add some fresh water and you're going to let that sit for about a week or two. You can go pretty long actually. And then you're going to rinse um, all that water and goo um, out of here and in like a fine mesh strainer. And all you'll be left with is some wet um, but fully processed seeds, which I then lay out onto some paper towel or a dishcloth that's specifically for this purpose. And in about maybe 12 hours, 24 hours, they're completely dry and I pack them away. 
So that's how tomato seeds are processed. If you store them in the, fri the fridge or a freezer, um, they could last up to 10 years um, easily. What I like to do is if the seed is really old and I have a lot, um, I'll just do a couple extra seeds. So making sure that I have enough plants from what I want. Um, so yeah, if it's newer seed, you probably just have to put two seeds in to make at least one plant. I usually have a 100% germination rate, so I usually just use maybe two or three seeds maximum and try to save both those plants. Um, I have some interesting kind of dwarf tomatoes and things I want to try. Um, Secret Seed Cartel, great company. This is a variegated um, beefsteak style tomato. Um, and the tomatoes are really beautiful. And so I'm gonna start some of these. A lot of the time when you buy seeds, you might only get like 20 or maybe 10 or 15. Um, I've tried these a couple of years in a row, so I probably used six or seven seeds. So I wanna make sure that I'm, you know, keeping, maybe not gonna start tons of these, maybe three or four seeds. They're a couple of years old. This container actually doesn't say how old they are, but it's always good to write that down because I find that, you know, some plant is going to get shoved to the bottom of your seed box and then it's going to be completely useless. A lot of seeds like onion um, and that family, they don't stay fresh for very long. Tomatoes, 10 years. If you just kept this in a container airtight somewhere, not even that cold, I would give it, you know, five to six years. But anything under that, all of these could sprout, especially if you use a little jar just like this that doesn't have any seeds processing in it, but just plain water. Um, and you can soak your seeds for up to 12 hours. Um, I've seen longer. The other thing I've seen people do, now I don't have, oh, maybe I do. Well, no, I don't have extra bags, but imagine you had a little plastic bag and some paper towel. You could actually sprout those seeds in the paper towel and before they get too big, you can pluck them out and then plant those in individual containers. I'm gonna show you the most basic, easy stuff. If you want some extra help, soak your seeds for at least 10, 12 hours, six hours will do it too. Um, just depends on how long you wanna keep track of that. You don't wanna leave them for too long because once they've been processed and all that goo is off, they can sprout in water. So if you left them for more than 24 hours, they might sprout in the water and then they would just become mush if you forgot them in there, so. Depends if you're a more step or a less step type person. Um, so yeah, I've got some extra plant labels that I like to recycle every year. I've got those handy. I've got a brown and a blue Sharpie, as long as you can see it on either a white label or we're gonna see a red cup here. Um, I've got a spray bottle, pepper seeds that we don't need. Um, I've got some, a bag of vermiculite over here some red solo cups and that's going to be my first thing. I also have a recycled container of dish soap, very kind of light squeezable um, container that already has this little spouted lid, a little part cap part is off, but you, you know, it broke off, um, but it's been washed a bunch of times. So it's really just water in here. And this is actually a really great way to delicately water things I find and you don't have to spend any money. And then I hide this away in the cupboard. So you know, I don't have all these random things around, but it is really good to recycle this stuff because I've seen seedling waterers for $30 um, at Lee Valley or, you know, other houseware stores. And that just seems a little unnecessary for seedlings, especially when it's just you seeing it. If you have a big operation, get yourself an industrial one. But if you're just at home doing some, that's all you need. A spray bottle that's been never used for anything else except water unless you think it's really 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 clean um, this works really nicely for watering seedlings and seeds because that spray is not going to disperse the seeds in the soil they're not going to move around they're not going to get too deep that's what we don't want so of course um, tomatoes there's a couple things there's there's many ways to do things obviously and some things are going to suit you better than others you could, um, you know, start them in some small little containers. These are recycled from something. Just make sure that everything you use um, year to year is clean with the kind of like a diluted bleach mixture, like one drop to, you know, a couple cups of water. Just something really, really light, just to make sure that you've got all this 
potential bacteria, any kind of fungus that might impede your seedlings health off of your old pots. Um, however, tomatoes get really big really fast, even indoors, I find. Um, so it's better to start them in a larger container because ultimately you're going to have to transplant them into one. So that kind of brings into focus this other method I have. I saw someone online. Now oh, I don't know if you can actually see this, but there are little um, peat pots in here, like jiffy pots, they call them. And it's really just compressed peat moss in like a little um, compostable skin that you can actually peel off pretty easily, but it keeps it all together. You get them wet and they expand. And I will start maybe one to two seeds in one of these inside something like this with a label sticking out. I just get a random one. Pearls of Wisdom is a tomato that I used to grow. So there we go. Let's we'll just pretend that it's in there. Then I can do that. Once they've all sprouted, I can observe and see, okay, is there one, is there two? And then I'll transplant them into one of these cells, maybe split up. Maybe I'll cull the other one. If I don't, you know, it's like every tomato takes up a fair bit of room. I'd safe to say at least, you know, three, three to four square feet per plant in most situations. I mean, you can tie them closer together, but tomato plants get huge. So, you know, that's a lot of tomatoes expanded, but I'm growing for a lot of people, not just myself. Um, but if you're at home and you want to try a bunch of varieties, this is a good way to do it. Be sparing on your seeds. That way you don't have to get rid of any extra seedlings. You just give them a little spot. Um, maybe you have a secondary. I've got a couple of these, so if I needed another one, I could move over to that. Although my light space um, is getting pretty limited. Um, I need to get some more of these, but they're pretty pricey, so I might wait till they go on sale this season and just suck it up, but... If I can manage it, I'll get some more because I need the room, which is crazy. I always need more room to start seedlings. So this is one way to do it. This is a kind of a more um, laborious way of doing it because you're starting them in here. You're keeping an eye on it. You're having to pull these out, split them in half, then replant these back in here at the right level. Tomatoes like to be planted. Um, you can plant them right back up all that... Um, sprouted stock area can be submerged in the soil and that will actually produce more um, roots so that's kind of another benefit to this method but a little bit more time intensive a little bit more things to remember you know not sure but it's always good to experiment um whenever sorry my rabbit is sneezing <laughs> good timing good timing i feel bad for her but she's allergic to hay and she's a bunny so um, yeah, I like to use, I've used this a couple of times on the live streams. Um, I have like this uh, wash basin that I've recycled many, many times. And if I wash this out, we wouldn't even know we had soil in it. I've got a yogurt container with some extra water. I like to pre-wet my seed mix. This is just a potting soil mix with a little bit extra peat in there and some perlite. Um, and I will be topping off my tomatoes with um, some vermiculite at the top. That'll help retain some of the moisture below. I find that my LED lights are pretty bright and the plants are consuming a fair bit of uh, moisture. The sunshine just left here and I think we're gonna get our first thunderstorm today of a year. There was some thunder earlier in the winter which was kind of weird, but um, yeah, so this is now not a muddy texture or anything like that. It's not wet to the touch, but if I squeeze it, there's moisture in there, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want because I like to, I don't like to press my soil down too much. And if you put soil in that's too light and airy in any kind of container, when you water it, it just turns into a mudslide and your seeds end up at the bottom and they'll never germinate to the top because it's too far of a journey. So <laughs> yeah, so you can reuse pots. Um, these are usually what I like to start zucchinis and squash and pumpkins in. They're quite big um, and those plants grow quite large. However, one of the easiest foolproof things you can do for tomatoes is red solo cups. Now, I know that um, we haven't really been having parties or events or anything like that. So maybe this is something for next year after we celebrate um, 
at some point this summer or you know somebody who has a party or something like that. Um, these were $1.25 for 18 and that 18 is a lot of tomatoes for most people. Ooh. For $1.25, some red Solo cups. We've got some measurements in there, which is pretty handy for this, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, and they're really easy to write on with a Sharpie. So you don't even really need um, to put a plant label um, on these guys because a red Solo cup, you can just write it on the side. And to me, I love color coding things, um, especially when you have volunteers and different projects going on. So to me, red means tomato. Um, so I could have picked um, white, or blue or anything like that, but I decided to I'm knock these completely over. Um, red. I'm gonna split these into three groups, just so they're not too thick. And what I like, I'm actually I think I'm only gonna cut one of these, or not cut, but drill. I'm using a drill um, with a pretty small drill bit. I don't wanna damage the integrity of the actual cup. I'm gonna drill two holes, maybe three, um, in all of these cups at once. Just... Like that. I kind of spun them at the last minute so the, only the top one has it even, but really just need a couple of drainage holes. And now I've just done six cups at a time. It took me no time at all. So far we've invested, you know, uh, 30 seconds and $1.25 for some cups. I'm not going to use them all, so that's not either. Um, yeah. And I'm going to use these instead. And like I showed you before, we've got Phelan's first snow. So I'm going to take a, I have a brown Sharpie that I've been using, but I'm actually going to use a blue Sharpie and write that down on the side. I can put the whole name and then today is the 24th, the third month. So we've got the date that I started it right there. Now, because tomatoes um, can tolerate being planted deeper, I'm gonna take advantage of that feature that they have and I'm gonna scoop some soil into here um, about part way up almost to that top line mark in here and then plant my seeds on that. So I've just scooped this in. You can even have your kids do this because it's so easy when everything is simple. I'm just lightly spinning this and patting it down, not compressing hard or anything like that. But this isn't going to move around and I've got a couple more um, lines left just as a, a marker. We're not going to go all the way to the top because later on when these actually grow up we're going to take advantage. We haven't used that much soil. They will occupy all of this with roots um, so I don't want to give them too much. I'm going to take the seeds. I'm going to plant about four hoping maybe five of these guys in the hopes that I will get all five um, plants and then if I spread them around spread them around here as you can see they're just the light little speckles on here I put I give them enough space so that if I have to um, peel them apart later on um, they're not tied together which happens in the small peat ones like that I'm going to go back over to my soil and add a solid handful it should have the consistency of like if you were digging into a freshly made cake <laughs> which I would say that is the perfect texture it's maybe a little bit more moist there we go I'm gonna add I didn't pack that down hardly at all I've got some vermiculite I'm just gonna like dress that on top like so and because I have this nice little arrangement and I haven't watered it, I'm not gonna go for something like this just yet. I'm gonna use the sprayer. 
until that vermiculite is kind of stuck to that bottom layer. I can get a little bit more aggressive. There we go. Making sure to seal up your seeds, put them back, store them for another year. And you know, if you're running low on this variety and you really like it, um, I recommend keeping an eye on that plant, making sure that it's far away from other varieties and that you can actually save some seed and save your own. So there we go. That is how I like to start my tomatoes. This is nice and light. And so that when I'm ready, and we'll check in on this um, on the live stream, but when the, you know, they've started to grow their other leaves in here, um, by other leaves, I mean their secondary leaves. So not just the first sprout, but their second set of leaves or more. I'll be able to tell if they're variegated. Um, and uh, I can separate them really easily by just squeezing this before they come out, tilting it to the side and transplanting them out. Perfect, there you go. And so this is five tomatoes. So if you only want five tomatoes, um, you can just start them in a cup like this. And I have um, some heat mats, are they hooked up? They're not hooked up to this level. Actually, maybe I have them over, it's underneath this one. You can't really see it, but there's a heat mat here, right here. That extra warmth is really gonna help. So if you can put it somewhere warm, it doesn't actually have to be under any light. You can stick um, a bit of plastic on top. As long as it's somewhere warm um, or under some light, there's a heat mat up here as well. Um, then we're ready to go and it can just hang out there. Um, additionally, like these ones, this is the method. I'm going to open this up just to show you. But any that I've started in these little um, peat pellets, they just need to be filled up around with some soil. I might take off that little film if it'll allow me and there's not too many roots. But as you can see here, there's like a stronger one and a weaker one. I might just not, we might keep the other one. This is a nice variety. But all of these, I started at least two seeds in here just to make sure that I got one. And some of them I got two, some of them I got nothing yet. That one's freshly up. So there's some action, some no action. We've got at least one. That one, There's two for that one. So these I only started a couple days ago, so we could definitely see more soon. But that is how I do it. I think heat is important. So if you have a fridge, um, you can always stick them up there. My fridge actually isn't that warm. You're better off going somewhere that's very cozy. These, I think sets of two are pretty inexpensive. I've seen them at lots of different local hardware stores, um, heat mats. You can get them at like a pet store for reptiles. Same thing. They might try to sell them for a little bit more. I don't know. But... I don't know, the wires under here are driving me nuts, but all the um, heat mats are kind of temporary, so I like to move them around. Not everybody, once they've all sprouted, like these peppers no longer have a heat mat underneath because they've all sprouted, I've transplanted them all. And I'm just gonna show you quick how I water them with the recycled dish soap container. I just tilt this over. I don't even squeeze it, I'm just kind of directing it. It's hard to do on stream because I'm short. But I just, um, yeah, keep them watered and happy now that they've been freshly transplanted. And it was the same method. Um, I started them in one little seed um, pellet like this, and then I transplanted them into a larger container. So there's, there's different ways. Um, like I said, you could start one variety in here. You could do a mix. That's all you really need. Um, but tomatoes get pretty big pretty fast, especially under really great conditions. So at least once a month, um, I like to, with some, like what I'm watering them with, whether it's a watering can or you don't want to use a sprayer, but I use like a diluted uh, fish emulsion or compost tea, like super diluted, less than they recommend. Just a bit, um, because a lot of these um, starting mediums, especially... Um, like potting mix or seed starting mix, doesn't have a ton of nutrition, which is good because you don't want things to really take off. Otherwise, you're going to be really limited for space. However, 
um, you know, I, I think it's important to add a little bit of compost tea. Um, you could also do like some worm castings of your own, but something super, super light and diluted once a month um, to anything that you've started indoors, especially tomatoes, because if they get um, deprived of nutrients, they just don't thrive as well once they're older and on their own. So yeah, that kind of concludes starting tomatoes. Um, and I'm going to check in once in a while and then we can kind of go over how they're doing and what's next. Um, for the next couple of months, it'll just be starting them indoors, making sure that they're warm and they're growing appropriately and they've got enough room. If you start them in one of these cups and don't transplant or at least narrow it down to two, you might have some problems with them com competing for root space. Um, I mean, we want really healthy, um, hardy, root heavy plants for when we plant in June. Usually our target for this area, which is zone five, um, is about June 1st. So yeah, that's the goal. I've got a bunch started over here on my windowsill and a bunch under lights. Um, let me know which one you try or um, what you get up to this year with yours and we will follow them along. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comment below, share this video to people who like gardening stuff and want to get to know some more free skills. Every Wednesday, I will be doing that. So see you later, guys. Bye.